let's uh, discuss the example of uh, engine bogey system okay railway typical uh, simple uh, system here now here you have an engine now we are considering motion along one dimension only one direction only so uh, along this dimension here you have the engine <coughs> with its mass me moving with a velocity ve bogey a having mass ma moving with velocity va and bogey b with mass mb moving with velocity v uh, we have the stiffness of the coupling between the engine and bogey a uh, and we also have the damping and the configuration in which this uh, stiffness and damping are shown that's also available here also the coupling between the bogey a and the bogey b is shown now how do we model this system using bond graph okay so first of all we start with a one junction which models the velocity of this engine and we assign the mass of the engine to this using this i element this inertia it moves with the velocity v then you have the traction uh, between the engine wheels and between the rails and that results in a force on the engine which we will write as fe it's a traction force and uh the velocity with which the engine moves of course remains the same then you have the velocity of the bogey a shown here as va you assign the mass of the bogey a ma over here and also you have the velocity of the bogey b and mass of the bogey b now what we have done here are indicated all the velocities that means all the flows so this uh, approach is called as the flow mapping approach in bond graph it's very convenient for mechanical systems where the motions are uh, known or where they can be determined easily now between these masses you have the couplings so let us model the coupling over here so you have the coupling relating uh, between the engine and the bogey a you require the relative motion between these two so you have this velocity is equal to this velocity ve minus this velocity va so both these velocities okay they are taken and the relative velocity is obtained now this is common to both these elements c and r elements so one junction put a c element here put an r element in the same way exactly in the same way you also do it for this coupling va minus vb and you have va with respect to vb and assign the c and the r elements corresponding to this coupling so you have got all the elements shown here now suppose you want to show the friction between the if if a brake is applied or this uh, braking action between the engine and the tracks so you are going to lock the wheels of the engine so the speed of the engine is ve and you have uh, on the other side the speed of the track is zero so the relative motion between these two is going to be uh, it is going to be ve minus zero and so you can directly place this re as a dissipative element it is the braking force that is applied on the engine due to the braking action okay similarly you can have a braking action uh, here uh, uh, for the bogey a and also uh, bogey b okay uh, 
This is the breaking action. It is shown over here using these arrows. FRE, FRA and FRB. These are the frictional forces that are causing the breaking action respectively. So uh, I will just discuss with you uh, over here, um, just as a brief discussion, how do we uh, arrive at this RE directly being acting, directly acting on this uh, engine velocity, how it is uh, acting on this one junction directly. You see this engine is having a velocity V. Okay. And the track is at the velocity zero. So SF for the track, this is actually zero. Track is still, but the engine wheel is moving. Now, the relative motion between the engine and the track can be obtained using this zero junction. Uh, I'm sorry, this should not happen. Why is it happening? Okay, let us use this. Uh, I think I can, uh, can start this. Yeah, let us uh, prepare a copy of this. A little. Yeah, so here we will work on. Now let us just discuss this part. <clears throat> yeah, so here uh, we have so we have uh, the source of flow that is the track is at rest. We have a zero junction here for relative velocity. So this relative velocity between the wheel, that is VE minus this uh, <coughs> So here we have, I will take this in this direction. Okay. You could, you could take it. Uh, this is acting like a sink. Okay. So you can consider this as taking the relative velocity VE minus zero. OK, so this is going to be zero velocity. Oh, sorry, uh, it's going to be uh, VE velocity. So we will have here VE minus zero, which is VE itself. And this is uh, a breaking action. So <coughs> Permanently energy is lost, so it has to be represented using an R element. It could be a linear or nonlinear R element. It doesn't matter. We'll just take it as R E. OK, R E. Uh, it could be a breaking uh, force that is acting. So if you do the causality also, you will get it correctly. You will get causality for this is a source of flow. So it's going to show flow here. Uh, this is actually going to be causal like this because 
this i element is going to determine the flow here and uh, this will have to take a causality here because this is the only bond which will certainly have to bring in the information of effort into this zero junction now coming to causality also we can uh, have a discussion on the causality for this as well uh, so we can place a start with the sources so we can place a causal stroke here okay effort has come into this junction uh, we can place uh, i element in integral causality here so all the other bonds have to accept that causality because it's a one junction all the bonds have to accept this flow which has been brought in by one bond then we can uh, look at the other uh, other options uh, we can take this i element place it in integral causality flow has come in so the other bonds have to accept that flow okay only one bond can bring in information of flow into this one junction uh, here we have got two bonds bringing in flow the third one has to certainly be bringing in effort otherwise this junction will lose its uh, meaning so flow has come into this one junction the other bonds have to accept it in the same way here also we will have this i element causal integrally like this flow has come into this one junction all the other bonds have to accept it now flow has come from both sides here this from these two bonds uh, this has to bring in effort uh, here flow has come into this one junction so the other bonds have to accept so you can see now that this particular bond graph is completely causal not only causal but it's completely integrally causal okay now here the purpose uh, what i had actually in showing you this is this how this re has been fixed here you see what we are doing so what we have what we have just done actually so what we have just done Uh, we have the velocity here ve velocity here the velocity here is zero now if you uh, if you see the efforts here only one bond can bring in effort into this zero junction let us say this effort is e the same effort has to be there for all the other bonds because it's a zero junction so this effort is e okay so you find that the power that is e into ve is coming into this junction the power over here is e into zero so it is zero over here e into v so whatever power is coming is getting dissipated over here into this breaking action so it's like this part this part is actually like not playing any role so you can just uh, take this you can eliminate this part okay what you are left with is just this e so this bond becomes redundant so this r directly can be connected through this bond over here and that is what we have done we have directly connected this re to this one junction so this is the explanation of why we added this re to the one junction 
if the track uh, let us say if this wheel was actually moving on a track which itself was moving okay suppose if the track also is mounted on a train or on a bridge which is moving then you would have had uh, motion of uh, motion of the track also it would not be zero in that case you need relative velocity but uh, in this specific case because the track is at rest you can directly place this uh, over here okay so uh, i hope uh, this point is clear to all of you